this video I'm just going to quickly show you some of the basics in Fusion 360. Um, so this is a vase, there's whatever you want to call it, that I created in within about a week of learning the software. Now it, look, it looks quite complicated to make because there's, there's no flat edges on it, you know, it's quite curvy and the render looks quite nice but it's not complicated at all. If The key to Fusion is to breaking down the models into individual steps, like chunking it down. Just like you would in school, if you got a really long maths equation, you wouldn't tackle it all at once, you just chunk it down and break it and then do each section. So I'll just show you how I did this. So at the bottom of Fusion here, you get your history timeline. So if I go all the way to the back where I finished my sketches, turn them on. You can see to create the profile, all I did was just create a couple of cylindric, uh, cylindrical sketches, or cir just circles, on at different heights, and then I lofted that shape up to create this shape here. And then I created another sketch on the side, looking from the other direction, with a nice sweep through it to create that profile. And then after that, I hollowed it out, you know, added some fillets on the edges to soften it a bit. And then oh, moved it around a bit. And then basically to sum up the end part, I just offset that shape again on the inside and then twisted it around 90 degrees. So basically this gold insert is exactly the same shape as the marble. It's just slightly smaller. And I've just turned it around, and then after that, I've just you know applied um, a zoom out. Where's the other one? Hmm. Oh, there. I just applied two lights either side in the render environment, and that was it. And just made the background blue. So that was it for the creating that object it looks quite complicated but it's not it's really easy to do but that is the same technique that I use for everything that I do so it doesn't matter how simple or complicated it is I just break it down and start right if I've got this sketch I'll extrude it that way and then I'll go look from a different side add another sketch extrude that so that that's how it's done <coughs> so when you first open a new document this is what it'll look like this might be turned on uh, sorry. And throws. What is going on? Give it a minute. I don't want to be inside. Okay. Right, so this is what it'll look like, not the other way around. And it, I've only got a, the base model MacBook, so it's a bit... Right, so this is what it is. In the middle, you've got your origin. The lines represent the axis, and then these orange squares represent the planes. Now planes are sketch planes, so everything in Fusion, well, m most of the time it works off a sketch. So if you can draw a sketch on here, or there, or that side, and then you can extrude that sketch up or down in that direction. So that's how you create general shapes, and of course you can rotate things around these axes here, you know, the red, green or blue. And the centre point is called the origin. So you want to design your models around the origin, because when you rotate, the whole environment rotates around that centre point. So if your model's over here and you rotate, it's going to end up over here somewhere and it's just, it takes time. It, it, it's only a second or two, but when you're doing this, you know, 20 times a, se uh, a minute, just going like that, it, it really adds up. So you want to create your model around this origin, preferably at the very centre. So <coughs> if you want to create something, 
we always start by creating a new sketch so if we want to create a new sketch on the bottom plane like that the camera will then switch to that plane so you, you're looking like straight down on it so now if I want to create a, a circle I'll come over here and just click the circle button and then I can drag it and I can define the size so 50 millimeters I want that and then you can zoom out now one thing to note is that this isn't is an infinite canvas so if I just zoom out it doesn't matter how far I zoom out although it looks like there's a line here this is just to save RAM but it's actually infinite so if you were to make something 100 meters wide this this obviously would extend to that width so it's not defined by this background here so if we have our sketch and then we want to extrude that we just click on the uh, sketch and then you know type in a value so five millimeters but one thing to note as well if we go back to our sketch if we have it's like a, li a light blue shading if it's light blue on the inside and then white on the outside that means that it's a solid like a, a completed sketch so if I was to do that and then I'll just trim away you can see that that sketch is now broken it's not blue in the middle so if I finish the sketch and then see this extrude now it's got a yellow box around it which means that there is an error so if I just turn that sketch back on and hit the E button for extrude I can't extrude there's nothing you can do so you've got to create um, full sketches so that they turn blue so now if we um, undo that finish the sketch so that's how you create that and then like I said if you want to create another sketch here create a sketch on that plane and let's say we want to add a circle in the middle now we have that sketch on this plane here right in the middle of that this object so now if we hit E on the keyboard and then well you can drag it or you can type in 15 then when you extrude these menus pops, pop up all the time so you can change different attributes of the extrusion so you can have it completely symmetric so it saves you a bit of time doing it on both sides you can cut it you can add it as a new body you can join it so it joins with that uh, circle or you can intersect it and just have the remaining part so we'll just uh, cut it for now so the, they're all the tools for creating these I'll go into these in future videos because some of them require a lot of detail but basically these create tools are obviously as what the name implies they help you create stuff and then the modify tools you can use these to modify the objects or bodies that you've just created so if we go back to that extrusion and we'll make a, a new body you can see here we've got the disc and then the cylinder if we want to join them we wouldn't use these we would use these modifiers because we want to modif the, modify the bodies that we've just created so for this we want to combine them so you can find it here or you can just hit combine at the top and then we want to define what the target body is so we want this one to combine with this one and then join that's fine uh, so now you can see we've just got one body left if you want any of these on the top if you use them quite a lot so if you use the combine tool quite a lot or maybe the shell hmm. split body I use that quite a lot so if you hover over it and then click on this menu you can pin it to the taskbar so it's already there but you can uh, pin it to the taskbar just to save you a bit of time alternatively once, once you get used to what the tools are called if you hit S on your keyboard you can bring up the search so if you want to split you can just type in split body and that will bring up the tool just because sometimes Autodesk actually move these around in the menus it can get a bit confusing so S on the keyboard and then you can you know search for whatever you want so that saves a lot of time in the future 
So if we wanted to modify this body and maybe add a fillet, we just click the fillet tool and then because fillets are on edges, we have to define what edge we want and then define the amount, so one millimeter maybe, or and you can select multiple lines at once. You don't have to hold shift. Select that and maybe the top one down the face. And then one millimeter. So that'll fill it all of them in one go. Now another addition is you can add add another fillet in the same action. So if you click the plus button in this little menu, you can add that and then they're popped up separately. So when you go back to it, you double click on it. Instead of trying to go through this menu at the bottom, you can just double click on that and then you know find which fillet it was that was causing the problem or was wrong. So they're the modify tools. Um, assemble that needs another video. But basically the design workspace is where you do the most of your work. Generative, I'll get into another video. Render animation self-explanatory. Simulation, you're gonna like stress test stuff, you know, under temperatures or different loads. And render is like the photographic studio. So now if we get rid of that, turn the origin off. Now that you can, you can see that we're actually in like a studio and this looks a little bit more realistic compared to what it did. So if we now if we up here, click on the appearance, this is where we can change what the material looks like. So if this at the minute is steel by default, and you have all the materials here, but I know they have iron. So I can search for iron. And then iron cast, maybe I wanted this out of cast iron. We can go in there and we can add that on. Obviously the scale's not right. So if you want to double click on the material, you can change some of the parameters of the material. So if we wanted it really dark, you can take the scale down a little bit. And then click done. We can see that that now looks a lot more realistic. Now when, when you want to create a final photograph, you can preview it in here. And this is going to enable ray tracing, so it's the computer's calculating the light and where it's coming from and where it's uh, bouncing off, and then um, that helps to create a realistic image. So if you're happy with it, you can then click. Oh, I have to save it. Test. Once you're happy with the way it looks, you can then send it off to the cloud computers in Autodesk's um, facilities in California. So this doesn't require a powerful computer to render, so it can save you a bit of time, so you can send like 10 renders off at once, save a bit of time. Um, I'll do another video on going in depth with all these, but that's the basics of it. And animation self-explanatory, as I said, um, manufacturers where you set up like tool paths to kind of uh, cut things out and remove material, stuff like that, and then drawing is creating technical drawings. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. So, yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you.